For USCFootball.com, I'm Keely Orr here with Shock and Spratling for instant analysis of USC's 35-31 loss to BYU in the Coliseum. Now, Shock and after USC's performance against UCLA, I think everyone counted them out against BYU, but it was a closer game than people expected, a heartbreaking loss, especially for the seniors on senior night. But it seemed like something was there tonight, and talking to the players, it sounded like pride was there tonight. They were playing for each other. Yeah, it was uh, what we expected of this team all season. It looked like a different team, a team that actually cared about each other. You know, at the end of the game, when a lot of the older players are down, you saw some of the freshmen coming over and patting them on the back, and just you know, everyone was there for each other throughout the game. There was more energy throughout the game. Um, it just looked like a team that was fighting for each other, and that's not necessarily what we've seen throughout this season. And I think we saw the result. This team played, you know, the best that they played this season. Maybe not the best result, but you know, a, a team that played with pride and a, a team that the fans could actually be proud of for once. You know, they lost a game to a top 15 team. They lost on a, you know, lo couldn't get a yard, needed one yard on a fourth down play. Um, so they were right there in the red zone, had a chance to potentially win it late in the game. They fall short, but the way they played, I think, you know, USC fans could be happy with the way they played and could be proud of this team. They could be upset with some of the plays, some of the play calls and all that stuff as normal. But throughout the season, it's been you just have not looked at this team and said that's a team that really is representing the USC history and tradition. And today, I, I thought that they did that. You know, they, they played, you know, their hearts out. And that's something we haven't necessarily said all season. So, you know, I give them a lot of credit in a game where, you know, they're fighting to get bowl eligible. Obviously, that's not going to happen now. USC now 4-7 and seven on the season. You know, bowl eligibility is out of the the question for them getting a six and six. Uh, so you know, but it just I was impressed with the fact that they fought. Yeah. You know, they they lived up to the mantra "fight on" tonight, and that's something that hasn't been there all season. So for them to come together, uh, you know, it was it was a positive note to take out of this game. Mm -hmm. It also was a preview into the future and a, a possibly bright future. You had some freshmen step up, of course, Jackson Dart, like McCree and, and Kalen Bullock with the interception. What did you see from those young guys, and what does that mean going forward? Yeah, you, you look at some of those guys you talked about. Brandon Campbell gets in there and gets a, gets a touch. Darwin Barlow is a younger guy getting in there uh, with Keontae Ingram not available to go for USC. They're missing some big-time playmakers. Obviously, if they have Drake Lennon in this game, I think they win. If they have Keontae Ingram in this game, they probably win. Um, so just missing those big-time playmakers didn't have it, but you saw those freshmen stepping up. Lake McCree made a couple of really tough catches over the middle. Um, you know, Gary Bryant, you're seeing more and more. He's become a go-to weapon for Jackson Dart. Gets a touchdown late to bring him within a score. Had a, you know, he gets the fourth down play and comes up a yard short on a, a slant play. You know, they were roughing him up throughout the game, and there was no uh, no calls on the outside today. So you know, he was playing through it as a smaller guy. Um, but you see you see signs of guys that are stepping up and guys that have the potential and talk to some of the older guys. Jalen McKenzie told me this team will win a championship. He said Jackson Dart will lead a team to a championship. So they have a lot of pride and I asked him, you know, what gives you that confidence? He said you see the talent there. They have everything they need and they'll take away from games like this when they go on a road in a game they should win and you know they, they aren't playing their best. They'll take away from this game tonight and say, you know, be able to draw from it. And I think that's really interesting to hear one of the seniors talk about the younger guys. And you know, th there could be a lot of new faces or a lot of old faces that are gone next year. We saw a lot of guys walk in, in the, the senior day thing and a lot of guys will have the option of whether to come back because of the COVID year or move on. Some, some guys will be already moving on. Uh, you know, Liam Jimmins, he's a six-year guy. Vivai Malapai, yeah. it was great to see him go yeah. out, yeah. Um, you know, with a, you know, with a tremendous performance out there. Uh, a couple, I think he had one touchdown to, you know, to give his all and the way the fans lit up when he, you know, was announced or before yeah. the game was great to see as yeah. well. So, you, you know, there's a couple guys that will definitely be moving on, but a lot of guys with decisions and a lot of guys could be moving on either in their transfer portal or just, you know, Know, being finished with college so we'll see what this team looks like next year but some nice pieces that, that showed out tonight you know Jackson Dart like you said and Lake McCree I thought well, was a gem for USC tonight and showed what can be if they have a target over the middle yep. which is something that's been missing this season. Mm -hmm. Now when it comes to Jackson Dart it was his second start it seemed like from talking to his teammates he was more comfortable out there what did you see from him tonight? Yeah that's what the, you talk to the offensive line and they say you could tell that he's more comfortable but also some of the defensive players talking about how he's running down the sideline and, and you know dapping them up and congratulating them after a stop or uh, you know telling you know patting them on the shoulder in between 
during a TV timeout. Um, you know, he has that energy around him, and everyone kind of rallies around him. He has that it factor. Uh, now he's got to put together the mechanics of being a quarterback a little bit better. You know, throwing on the run a little bit. He almost had a couple interceptions tonight, but you know, came away clean. Uh, where he just just didn't square his shoulders up and try to throw it with all arms. So there's some small things he's got to clean up. But he's got the it factor. Everyone rallies around him. So that's what you're looking for in a quarterback, um, and and that's what everyone talks about with him. And the fact that he feels a little bit more comfortable. I thought the offensive line made that of it, you know, a lot easier for him okay, tonight yeah. because. He wasn't sacked at all. He wasn't pressured the same way he was against UCLA. Yeah. And the run game got going, and that just alleviates a lot off of a freshman quarterback, especially in the second half. They rushed the ball 14 times in the first half and 30 times in the second half. So they really relied on the run game and got going. Uh, Liam Jimmins said that they saw some different looks that they hadn't really seen from BYU in the first half. And when yeah. they started making the adjustments, they felt like they could run the ball, and they ran the ball pretty successfully in the second half. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to the defense, after seeing what U USC did or didn't do, I should say, against UCLA, I think people were expecting that this could be pretty ugly for USC. How, what was the difference tonight for USC defense? Yeah, you thought they played a lot better, and they still gave up 35 yeah. points. Um, but I think that – and the biggest issue is still tackling. Yeah. You know, they don't tackle enough. But the thing I thought was different tonight is that – they brought the thump when they did hit somebody. You know, there were a lot of big hits. I think they wore down the BYU uh, on both sides of the ball. I thought they wore down BYU. They, they went with more tempo on the offensive side with Jackson Dart and enabled him to get in a little bit more of a rhythm. Um, and then on the defensive side, you know, they hit Tyler Al Algar over and over and over. Yeah. He took some big shots tonight, and I think he wore down by the end of the game. And you would expect BYU, you know, older team, a team that lives on physicality. That's what Kalani Sataki has always been about. You know, you expect that from them. And USC wore them down, which is something that's kind of impressive to me. Mm -hmm. Now, I know we sound very positive about a USC loss in the Coliseum, but overall, what are your takeaways from this game? One more game for USC, which is weird. It's the end of the regular season for the rest of the college football world, but we still have one more to cover. Yeah, I, I think the the biggest thing is you know waiting on the coach announcement and seeing where this team can go. But you saw the bright spots tonight. I think that's what you take away from this after seeing this team has been in the doldrums throughout yeah. this season, where they're just not playing to their potential. They played more to their potential this year, and if they get the right head coach, I think that they you know they have the pieces to build around, and we'll see what they can do. Once again tonight, they had around 30 guys not dressed again, so a number of scholarship guys not out there. Did get a couple guys back. Saw Corey Foreman back out there. Good to see him back out there. Drake Jackson was a little bit limited, and you know he had a big play that came in the negative way. He got a call for a roughing the passer, which is a very questionable call. Brought back an interception. BYU scores on that drive later to be begin the second half. And obviously when you win by four points, a touchdown is really big uh, when it would have been a turnover and USC would have had the ball in, in scoring position. So that play was huge. It was some, a lot of, like I said, a lot of grabbing and stuff on the outside that was allowed to go on, yeah. uh, some penalties that weren't called. So I didn't think it was a great officiated game. And when you lose by four points, you, you look at all those small, small things, but also small mistakes by USC that got them there. But I think the overall thing you take away is that there's some potential here. It's not, a, you know, it's not a deadbeat, uh, you know, program that a new coach is going to be coming into so we'll see when they announce a new coach what they can do and how quickly they turn things around but I, I think also like I said there could be a number of older guys moving on that have eligibility that may decide to go elsewhere or just finish their career so we'll see what this roster looks like uh, once the offseason goes through. Mm -hmm. Well Shotgun like I said it's the final game in the Coliseum for the 2021 season probably a season that both USC fans and players want to forget any final thoughts before we wrap it up? It's a season that, that people want to forget, but maybe tonight we saw the building blocks of what could come for USC going forward, and that's the thing that you you kind of grab onto right now at the end of a you know a, a season that's just in, in the dumps. Um, I think you look for those positive moments, and I think you you look at what Jackson Dark did tonight, and you think look at some of those young players, and you see the potential, the pieces that could be there for USC going forward. Now, how do they come about, and do they play with that same pride going forward for an entire season, or is it just on senior night? You know. Do you get up for every game rather than just one game uh, uh, in the year? And we'll see if they can continue it next week. I think that'll be a, a good um, a good barometer to see where this team is at. If they've actually maybe turned a corner internally, and you know maybe they, this team has you know decided to play for each other and you know has figured out some things internally, or if it's right back to where they've been throughout this rest of the season. So next week, even though it's uh, you know it's two teams that are playing for nothing, um, it'll be interesting to see uh, you know how USC comes out and if they play with the fire that they had tonight. Mm -hmm. I think we lost our light, too. I think that's technology's way of telling us to wrap it up in the 2021 season in the Coliseum. That's going to wrap it up for Shotgun Spradling. I'm Keely Orr. For more, check out uscfootball.com.